You know, I'm gonna give you a history lesson. We got some dumbass motherfuckers floating around this country. <laughs> start laughing! <laughs> and when I do, start fucking. Also, y'all did some nasty ass jokes on my ass, too. Funny jokes and unfunny jokes come out of the same birth. You fucking guys are unbelievable. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Why You Laughing, a history of comedy podcast here at the Vaulted Podcast Studios in Pateka, Rhode Island. And uh, today I'm pleased to introduce you to Louis Anderson. Uh, rest in peace, old friend. And uh, the gang is all back. Mike, Craig, Matt, all here. It's a little chitty, chilly here in the vault today. I'm not used to it because it uh, Craig had the car at a cozy 140 degrees. <laughs> Which I, I prefer I prefer to be lulled into a nice <laughs> it, was, it was a problem when he was like uh, Hey do you mind turning the heat down I'm like it's off It wasn't on <laughs> He finally turned it off mercifully But uh, I had to turn the AC on Now the whole have, Happy to have the whole gang back uh, If you're a fan of Why You Laughing And you're uh, watching us on YouTube Make sure you subscribe Like, comment uh, All that helps the algorithm If you're listening to us on Apple, Spotify Or anywhere else you get podcasts Leave a five star review and uh, you know, tell a friend. And if you want to get the episodes a week early and uh, support the show with a few bucks, go to patreoncom slash and uh, you get why you laughing episodes a week early, as well as the Blind Mike Project and all that fun stuff. Buy some merch. I'm wearing my Blind Mike Project hoodie here, very comfy. Uh, kept me too warm in that car. So uh, <laughs> plenty of fine products there. Well, and uh, today we are, as I said, remembering the uh, great Louis Anderson, who is kind of another guy. We're on a streak here. Because as these come out, I think it's Bob Saget, Tim Allen. I think Opie and Anthony and Greg Geraldo were there in there in, in the mix. But uh, Bob Saget, Tim Allen, and Louis Anderson all kind of fall into this category of guys who were extremely popular and famous and uh, wealthy and well-known. But I don't know that they had like a fan base. Like if you could find someone that was like, oh, I loved the comedy of Louis Anderson yeah. specifically. But – he did do a lot for like uh, self-deprecating humor, mm -hmm. and in the in the way that he did it, and you do see as much as like I said, I don't know uh, wholly his impact in comedy, but uh, having watched a lot of clips of him for this project, mm -hmm. uh, I you can definitely see his influence like still today in a lot of people. Yeah, I, and I would say he's like one of those comics that like his fan base was other comics. Yeah, yeah, like that's kind of what I comics saw him as. comic. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Oh, but there's a little. It's funny because I usually associate that term with guys like Attell or Colin mm -hmm. Quinn, whereas uh, Louis kind of a, a schmaltzier, and he mocks <laughs> himself for that a little bit. Yeah. Um. At least that's how he started. Where it's kind of uh, almost like yo mama jokes with the, <laughs> the, the level of fat jokes he was doing at the beginning of his career. <laughs> um. But I felt Louis Anderson. Uh. You know, I like to capitalize on the deaths of, of a lot of these guys. <laughs> But, but also, uh, he did have a very interesting uh, kind of sad life, and we find that to be more of a theme as we go through the early days of comedy. I, maybe less so now, where you see, like, you know, theater kids and improv mm -hmm. troops and shit get into comedy. Um, but back in the day, certainly, it was, you know, comedians were built off of uh, uh, you know, sad, depressing sad, childhood. Sad clownery. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, Louis Polly Anderson actually. is Louis, Louis Anderson's one of the poster boys for that, both in his act and uh, in real life. So, if we start in his childhood, he talked a lot mm. about, and uh, he ended up writing a book, uh, letters to his father about how you know kind of sad and abusive his childhood was. So uh, Louis was the tenth of eleven children, yeah. and then this I saw this out there a couple sources, but I listened to the episode when he was on Marin. Evidently, he told Marin. I don't know if there's a second episode that Marin didn't re-release when he died, because um, I couldn't find it in this episode. But according to a couple sources, he did tell Marin uh, that he's technically the tenth of eleven children, but also uh, five kids died during childbirth. Uh, the first child his mother had, and then two sets of twins. Uh, like I said, I couldn't find him talking about that, uh, but I did find that in a at a couple sources. So they would have had 16 children, which oh, is... Shit. When you're the 10th of 11 children, there's legitimately brothers and sisters you have that you don't really know that well, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I've heard, like, so uh, Neil and Kevin Brennan... Uh, both comedians. You probably know Neil, and unless you're a miserable bastard, <laughs> Very you don't know Kevin. <laughs> but uh, Neil and Kevin Brennan are brothers, and Kevin talks a lot of shit about Neil. 
And uh, I've heard Neil talk about this, and he's kind—he's of, like, "Well, we—I mean, we're brothers, but we, we don't even really know each other because yeah. they're like one of two, you know, two of eight kids or whatever it is." And they're very different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it had to be very wild living in a family like that. Um, and Louis says that he was never uh, really abused because. I guess by the time they got to him, his parents were a little tuckered out. <laughs> but uh, all, all of his, uh, or most of his other older siblings uh, were kind of the victims of this abusive, alcoholic father. Mm. And then by the time, you know, Louis came around, I guess he was not physically abusive, but would say, you know, like he'd burst into yeah. Louis's room shit-faced and be like, get up, you lard ass, and all that kind of shit. <laughs> his his fists swinging muscles were fatigued at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was an old savvy veteran by then. You know, he was a commentator. Yeah. He went to the announcer's booth by then. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, we have a little bit of Louis talking about that, right? Yeah. All right, let's hear that. <clears throat> But I once gave my mom, I couldn't get her a birthday gift. You know, I love my mom. And so I wrote her the coupon book. Did you ever do that? I'll wash the dishes. I'll uh, do the laundry. I'll kill dad for you. <laughs> it was a true story. Did you really? Did you really do a coupon that said I'll, I'll kill, kill dad, dad for you? For you. <laughs> Conan was always like... It rode the line of I. Th he played well with a lot of people and was a good straight man. Mm -hmm. But there were times where he couldn't break that like talk show. He's like, oh, yeah. fuck, what do I do here?" In moments <laughs> like that. I, so I, I we, we talk about like the coaching tree and stuff. Like in yeah. that moment, I kind of heard a little bit of like uh, Jim Gaffigan in there. Oh, really? Like, yeah. Where he, I could see Jim Gaffigan like taking a bit of. That's Louis. a good. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Yeah. Um, because I thought of Norton a little bit when I yeah. think, well, so Norton has talked about how Jim Norton has talked about how Louie gave him like one of his first breaks in comedy. Mm -hmm. Um, but also just the self-deprecation yeah. you can kind of see evolve from guys like, not saying they're the same level, but, uh, Louis Anderson, Rodney Dangerfield, that's sort of kind of like, woe is me, I'm a schmuck yeah. sort of comedy. And you can see that evolve over the years into guys that say they want to kill themselves on stage. Yeah. <laughs> like literally just more blunt about it, you know? But that's the that's the, the first little seedling of that back in yeah. the day. That's what was acceptable in the 70s to do it that way, you know? <laughs> Here's uh, more of that conversation. All right. Did your dad ever find out? Your dad, I hope, didn't find out that you were that you I promised did, your mom that you would kill him. He found out? He, well, my mom said, Louie, that's an inappropriate... Coupon. Yeah. <laughs> I go, what, the dishes one? <laughs> you wouldn't really kill your father, would you? I'd do it for you, Ma. Yeah. There's no expiration date on that coupon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one day I came home, my brother Tommy was eating ice cream, and I go, oh, this is not good, because we don't eat ice cream during the day. And I open the door and I hear my dad, there he is! Hitman Louie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, based on his father's history, I don't know how humorously that one ended, but <laughs> uh, the Hitman's home. <laughs> um, and you can kind of hear in there, but like just if you listen to Louie talk about his mother, there is a, you know, it doesn't take a, a great psychologist to realize there's a little Freudian thing going where, um, it, you know, Louie talks a lot about his mother being very protective of the kids, but not knowing what to do the way I think a lot of women were at that time, where if you were in a, an abusive relationship, like you didn't really know what to do. And there wasn't yeah. the outlet or just the, you know, the knowledge that we have now of, uh, of that sort of thing. So that kind of resulted in her smothering Louie, like her baby, you know, one of, one of the youngest kids in the family, which resulted in him becoming a pudgy little, like she would give him treats and, you know, baked goods and things like that. <laughs> and that's what kind of led to him being a little fat fuck, which... He did. Um, so I know Louis Anderson because of the cartoon Life with Life Louis, Louis, where he really depicted right. that childhood. Yeah. And it's a very funny. I don't know if he was the first guy to do this, but you see it in like uh, Big Mouth and cartoons like that now. Bobby's World. But, well, but no, what I'm talking about is yeah, a funny thing Louis did that I don't know if this was done before that, where he, Louis Anderson's voice was the voice of young Louis Anderson. Yeah. So, like, in the cartoon, it would be a little, you know, an eight-year-old or whatever he is, like, Dad, can I have some chocolate cake? <laughs> like, which is very, and you see more cartoons do that shit now where the kid is voiced by an adult. And, and I think Louie was one of the, I don't remember a lot of shows doing it. Yeah. Where, you know, you would have a woman, like a woman-voiced Bart Simpson and that sort yeah. of thing. Like, because you wanted the childlike 
voice, but Louie did it where Pickles. he's like, hey, who gives a fuck? Huh. Is it Tommy Pickles also? Yeah, over? Tommy Pickles. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking like Bird did the exact opposite. Like he, he is in there as a, he's in his show as a character, but he plays his dad. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Um, but yeah, and uh, speak like you said, uh, Mike, Bobby's, it was a weird time where they had kind of run through giving comedians like yeah. sitcoms based Camp, on their act. Camp Candy. Yeah, so they're like, let's yeah. throw some cartoons out there, yeah. some Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> uh, but we might get to that a little more later. Um, what's next, Matt? Um, him with Marin talking about his alcoholic dad. Oh, yeah. So there's a couple things here. He's talking about his dad, and he also has um, an interesting perspective on it that I think speaks a lot to how he was able to turn that into comedy. So, I mean, I find Louie to be an interesting guy, but let's hear this. Yeah. So w- w- your relationship with him, was, was <coughs> he was hard on you? He was an alcoholic. Sure. He was a mean, uh, mean, violent alcoholic. To all he his... never hit me. Yeah. But he was very mean to my mom and hit my older brothers and sisters before I was really even in the family. So by the time you were uh, awake, he was, t- he was, he was tired. He was tired. <laughs> So there was, uh, I guess I subconsciously yeah. stole that we, from we, rip, we ripped that off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so the interesting thing is, and a lot of people are not able to do this, um, but victims of abuse are usually uh, uh, victims of victims of abuse, meaning like typically abusers were abused as children. And that's the case with uh, Louis's dad. And Louis puts a perspective on that that I'm amazed, like not a lot of guys are able to do. Like he has an interesting story that he tells Marin about his father's childhood. And him and his wife would go on these cross-country train drunks uh-huh. and leave the kids. Right. And on one of the trips, there was a murder in the house uh, in, by a Swedish gang. On the train? No. Or in your house? No, in my dad's house oh, okay. growing up. <laughs> oh, okay. His parents were gone. Yeah. Pause for one second, man. Murder. Uh-huh. It doesn't get less confused. Like, he just says that. And Marin's kind of like, what? And he's like, yeah, yeah, there was a murder in the house. Anyways, here's the story. By, so, a, Swedish like, by a Swedish gang. <laughs> yeah, so if you guys are wondering that why. doesn't happen to you guys? <laughs> if, you guys are, if you guys are wondering why, we don't find out. I just wanted to throw that out there. Don't be, <laughs> if it confuses you, it confuses me and Mark Marin and everyone else listening as well. <laughs> so I just wanted to clarify that. And it was a Swedish gang in yeah. Minnesota, which was a weird thing. Yeah. And <laughs> I'd say um, they took all the kids away. Including my dad, huh? The you know the because they were uh, because they, they weren't there, right? And there was a murder, right? Who then, who got murdered? Somebody at somebody at the house. I don't. It wasn't one of them that got murdered, right. but the daughter <laughs> who, who was in charge of them killed herself out of right. One of my shame. older sisters, yeah, out of shame. And then my dad got adopted. Oh, you know what? They've got put up for adoption. Mm-hmm. You know what, how that works? Mm-hmm. They put people the, where that term comes from. Put you up in front of the congregation at the church. Really? And people would pick who they wanted. Oh, my God. Colin Kaepernick's like, protest in this clip. Yeah, right, right? I was just going to say, that sounds, <laughs> that sounds real 18th century America. And so Louis was, <laughs> Louis was able to kind of, you know, and I'm sure there was a lot of therapy involved and things like that. And obviously, uh, there's some other things in Louis's history that we could get to that it didn't quite work out. But I was, I was a little amazed that he was able to kind of... Uh, you know, rationalize that and understand where his father was coming from. And then he, he wrote a book, uh, Dear Dad, Letters to My Father, I think it's called, um, yeah. where it was these, like, letters to his dad. And evidently they um, – uh, he got a book deal just to do a book about his life. And, like, he started writing and was like, I, I don't want to write a book about my life. And then someone told him, like, those letters to your dad are, like, really interesting. Mm. Um, he had it published in like People Magazine or something like that, mm-hmm. and so he just did a bunch. And uh, the publisher was like, "Well, we don't want this. We want your life story." And he's like, "All right, I'll just do it somewhere else then." And he left and, <laughs> and published that book uh, because it meant a lot to him. So you know, it's it. I, I imagine that was tough, but it's uh, cool that he was able to turn that into comedy. And he's kind of one of the best example or most obvious, I guess, examples of being able to do that. You know. Um, what's that, next, Matt? That clip, by the way, yeah. I didn't realize he was talking about his dad as a young kid <laughs> yeah. until the very end of the clip. Yeah. I almost stopped and smashed you for saying, uh, mentioning his sister. I was like, how would his sister be alive? Well, he doesn't explain it until the <laughs> end of the clip. I did. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> yes. I said he was talking about his father's childhood. <laughs> oh, I thought his, never mind. <laughs> Well, everyone, I hope you folks at home are listening because no one in the room is. But hey, what's, what's next, man? Now, now we're starting to get into when he started stand up and how he started stand up. Okay. So 
this is another one. I think we said the same thing about Tim Allen, if I'm not mistaken. Evidently, it, it Louis, was, yeah. <laughs> Louis lost a bet, <laughs> so he uh. went up and did stand up, and he just liked it. I guess. Um, like I think he, like a lot of these guys, every story like that, it's like ah, I lost a bet and I ended up enjoying stand up. The reality is like. There was a you know, a bit of a bug in there. Like he was a comedy fan, you know what I yeah. mean. It just didn't materialize out of nowhere. But he did say like uh, so he started like in front of you know friends and family and just mm-hmm. got laughs and liked doing it, which so, is you know um, he wasn't he wasn't going to uh, octogenarian comedians f- uh, nursing homes and <laughs> forcing them to watch old clips of their material. <laughs> now, now, Larry. <laughs> When you got this board to the head, <laughs> what were you thinking here? <laughs> um, so he's he's one of these guys that did get his uh, big break on the Tonight Show, sort of. But he also, am I? What if I get to Rodney? Am I jumping too far ahead, Matt? No, no, okay. that's right there. So uh, <clears throat> the Tonight Show gets a ton of credit for breaking comedians. I mean, we talked about Freddie Prince, who was one of the best examples of that. Um, but what doesn't get enough credit is I mean, how many episodes now have we done <laughs> where we've mentioned this guy got his start on Rodney Dangerfield's Young Comedian Special. Yeah. Um, so Rodney broke a lot of these guys, and it's sad that that's gone away. Like, it's not mm-hmm. really possible anymore. Um, like, Jim Norton had Down and Dirty Down on and HBO. Dirty. Um, Attell had something on Comedy Central for a while uh, where he tried to showcase comedians. I mean, I, Comedy Central's had a bunch that were on like Friday yeah. nights or whatever and never ended up sticking because we were drifting into streaming. And even now, Netflix tries, like they throw the stand-ups out there, yeah. uh, which the stand-ups is a good series. Like they have Nate Bargetze, uh, Joe List, Dan Soder, Mark Norman, Brian Simpson, like funny episode or funny stand-ups on there. Yeah. But it doesn't have the same impact as just putting, and, uh, you know, th- Taylor Tomlinson as a special on yeah. the front page of Netflix, you know? And and those guys already have, like, a modicum of success. Like, they have an audience of some kind. Yeah. yeah. Like, like but, but that's the thing, like, that's different now. Like, unless you're going out to a comedy club, like, back in the 70s, you're right. not hearing about new comedians. Exactly. Except for The Tonight Show. Yeah, exactly. So, it's you know, not for lack of trying, but yeah. no one's been able to duplicate. And I don't think Rodney gets enough credit for that. Uh, mm-hmm. Because everyone says, like, oh, you go on Carson, your career is made. Yeah. Uh, but Rodney had, you know, I think, nine, at least nine seasons of that show yeah. where a lot of guys, I mean, Dice, uh, we'll talk about Kinnison in another episode. Uh, but Ray Romano, like a ton of these guys got their uh, start from Rodney, Rodney. basically. Um, so, yeah, uh, he does Rodney's Young Comedian mm-hmm. special. Uh, not long after that, he does The Tonight Show. And uh, he has kind of a funny story that I think is more towards the reality of how it was to be on The Tonight Show back then. I did The Tonight Show and I went to the store. So they, you know, they played outside. I knew it was coming. Right. You know, it was a really big thing for me. It's the biggest thing up till then that I'd ever done. And, um, you know, I'm feeling how great I am and all that bullshit. (laughs) And, uh, a guy comes up to me and he goes, hey, are you Louis Anderson? I go, yes, I am. And I stuck my hand out. He goes, I don't want to meet you. Can you move your car? You got to be in. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's a lot of that, too, where it's like, oh, overnight you were a sensation. But there's a – do you know who Dan Natterman is, comedian? Yeah. Uh, Dan Natterman is a funny story where like he was on Late Night with David Letterman, mm-hmm. and then after that someone saw him – like sitting in a- an alley waiting for a bus or something. He's like, that's, <laughs> that's showbiz, kid. <laughs> <laughs> so there is like, uh, Louis Anderson did get, you know, from uh, both Rodney and Carson, he did get a pretty big break. But I think it's also tough in the 70s and 80s for a guy like Louis Anderson, where now it would be like, hey, he's fat. We can make him the fat guy. <laughs> but but like in a in a way where they sold it as he's not the fat guy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they would try to find different roles for him. Yeah. Whereas back then it was like, oh no, he's the fat guy. We have to do fat guy <laughs> things. Like what if what if the fat guy owns a bowling alley? You know, like what if, <laughs> like the, those are the only roles. So he was he was putting this he was putting right, this box. <laughs> He was put in this box, kind of, of like, <clears throat> now he has to be the fat guy comedian. And you could say that, I mean, his act was focused a lot on that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he didn't do he didn't do a lot to help him out, but help himself out. But um, he, uh, uh, then one of his, uh, where am I, man? I'm getting all 
tangled up in my own thoughts here. Um, he liked doing comedy, but he had aspirations to do something else. Oh, that's right. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, so he's on with Bob Saget, by the way. Rest in peace to uh, both of these men. Um, Should we set the record straight on how Bob died? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe later. It was yeah. murder. Yeah. Well, we still don't know. That's the thing. Uh, the, you see, the cops came out and said they believe very thoroughly that he slipped and hit his head on the marble floor. Yeah, of course uh, they would. They're probably in on it. I'm not buying any of it. Why is this dent on his head is shaped perfectly like a nightstick? Yeah. No. I, <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Louis was on with Bob Saget. And he was talking about this, and I, he seems like I think this could have been okay I could see him as like kind of a talk show host, but I could also see it failing miserably. And this is what he had to say on the matter. The third thing that people might not know about is I wanted to be a talk show host. I suspected I that to. you had you, you, you did <laughs> yeah. you do that was did you do a talk show? Was that a, a Louis show? No, I did. Joan's husband, God rest his soul and her soul. Uh, had had uh, committed suicide and Joan took some time off and they offered me a week or a few days or something and they offered Arsenio a few days and I did it for a few days and I said to myself oh, I can't do this this isn't <laughs> me I mean you know you have to make people so interesting yeah you know actors and actresses and nothing personal but comics all have jokes and a story and you know, and I went, oh, I, I don't want to, I, I like this. I'd love to come and sit once in a while and do it. But no, I, I don't want to do this. It was a hard decision in one sense, but it was the right decision. I kind of respect that at the time. By the way, two, could you think of two more different personalities than Arsenio Hall and Louis Anderson? <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are our options. <laughs> um, but I do respect that where, like, at that time, that's kind of what you did. It was... You didn't have all these outlets that we do now. It was essentially your stand-up, and either you get a sitcom or maybe a talk show. Like yeah. those were kind of the roads you went down. And for Louis to be like, "Eh, it just, that doesn't feel like me," I think that takes balls. Like that's pretty, pretty self-aware of him. Because because mm -hmm. I could also see that going the route of you know the Chevy Chase show <laughs> or something. He didn't where, have a, a podcast or anything either, right? Like even no, I don't. No. I don't think so. Um, I like what he said though. He was like, "Oh, he's like, it's easy to talk to comics. He's like, they all have a story and a joke. He's like, talking to actors, it, making them interesting is <laughs> impossible." I was like, "Oh, that's funny." Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, it's just true. And even talking to comics back then must have been a little like. Can you imagine being Carson back then, where you know everyone's just doing their act to you? Like, it's not a real Ugh. conversation, you know. And back then, you could probably get. Away. I'm certain there were guys. Uh, you know, like I think when Rickles was on, it was more of a real like they were yeah. buddies um, to some extent. I also don't think people really picked up that they were doing bits until like Byron Allen uh, couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's my point is that uh, to your point that you couldn't tell they were doing bits necessarily because you weren't really aware of, mm -hmm. of the format um, and people weren't as exposed as they are now. But yeah. people probably did bits multiple times on The Tonight Show. You know what I mean? Like the same bit. Yeah. If they if they're on a year later and they haven't changed their act, Buddy Hackett or whoever's on there, right? They might <laughs> literally do the same bit that they did two years earlier right. on Carson, and that's gonna be if you're Carson, that's gotta be fucking exhausting, oh, gonna be irritating. <laughs> to put on a fake smile and everything. But that's what I mean when uh, the uh, the what was, what was Byron Aaron's show? Uh, Comics Unleashed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'd have yes. like Harrison Ford on. He's like, we were hanging out the other day. And I was like, no, you fucking weren't. <laughs> it's clearly just setting up whatever he wanted to talk about. I've told yeah. this, I mean, I've said this a million times, but uh, <clears throat> Norm, Norm loved telling the story of when he had John Lovitz on. <laughs> and apparently part of John Lovitz, bit, you know, John Lovitz is a bit about aging, I guess. Yeah. And uh, Byron Allen looks at his notes and he says... Uh, now, John, I hear you've been getting older. <laughs> um, so, uh, Louis Anderson said no dice to a uh, talk show career, and uh, but he did have a, a you know mild success with films. I guess he was in Ferris Bueller very briefly. Yeah, <laughs> you very can tell the guy doesn't have a huge uh, career when they're. When they're like, well, he was in Ferris Bueller hey, for <laughs> four seconds. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you where in that yeah, movie Yeah, I don't know was. where he was. Um, the Singing Telegram, I think. Or oh. something. Like he makes a brief appearance. All right. 
Uh, but I think if you're talking about Louis Anderson's movie career, most people would know him from Coming to America. Coming to America. <laughs> I, can only, yeah. I don't know what's second, really. <laughs> um, well, actually, first, I'll say I'll throw this in there. Um, you know the show Perfect Strangers? Yeah. Uh, evidently, he was originally cast as the lead in that. And uh, whoever Larry is, I'm not Larry. familiar with the show. He uh, Larry's uh, character name originally was Lou. He was the the straight man to Balky Bartakamus. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> so that would have been Louis Anderson. And they said the chemistry just didn't work, ah. and uh, he got the boot. You know, what I found out this is this is nothing to do with anything. I found out the Family Matters <laughs> is a spinoff of Yes, it is. Perfect Strangers. Did not know that. Yeah, I think that's when they were using spinoff yeah. pretty loosely. <laughs> It's Fair like enough. This lady, because yeah. I guess it was the mom she was, was in a, Perfect Strangers, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, and she was the uh, the elevator operator. <laughs> yeah, she's the fifth lead on yeah. Family Matters. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, so Louie was in Coming to America, and uh, there are multiple stories that go with this, where uh, the one that I think is more well known is that the studio told Eddie Murphy, basically, yeah. you need a white guy in this movie. Yeah. Which, boy, uh, how have times changed? <laughs> Why can't we get back to that, huh, gang? <laughs> For, force more whites into these movies. We're underrepresented. <laughs> but uh, oh. they said, like, you know, to have mainstream box office success, you need a white guy, which seems odd because the people haven't seen the movie Especially yet. Especially if that's your pick. <laughs> yeah, right. Well. well, Eddie Murphy said at the time, he's like, hey, well, if you want a white guy, the funniest guy is for this role is Louis Anderson. Uh, he demanded Louis be in that role. Uh, but Louis has a different reason as to why his name might have been in Eddie Murphy's head, which is kind of funny. I think this is on Sway on Sirius XM. Correct. Speaking yep. of different I'm at Ivy's. I'm sitting there eating the shrimp. Eddie comes in with his entourage. You know, probably six, eight, ten people. Cut there. <laughs> You know, because Eddie was Eddie. Eddie. I mean, yeah, Eddie's, he was, Eddie's, Eddie's yeah. you know, that was it. And <clears throat> I said to the waiter, I go, listen, put Eddie's bill on my card, but don't tell him till after I leave. I'm not doing it to, to be a big shot. I'm doing it because I'm from the Midwest, and that's something you would do. Mm. So I did it because nobody ever buys Eddie's. Yeah. I, be, I didn't think. And that's the kind of thing I like to do. So the next day I get a call from, uh, I think it was him, or it was, I think it was him to thank me. And then his person took over. You know, his guy he goes, nobody ever bought me that, you know. I'm doing this little movie called Coming to America. I'm going to get a, I'm going to put a part in it for you. Wow. wow. Are you serious? I'm serious. <laughs> You know how badly I would have botched that situation? Like, I would have also had the idea to pay for Eddie Murphy's meal. I mean, this could be good for me. But I would have done the Costanza where I'm, like, trying to make him see me hand. <laughs> You're, like, ah, taking the tip money out of the jar to put no, it back in. <laughs> don't tell Eddie Murphy about this. <laughs> oh, no. I dropped Eddie Murphy's check. <laughs> but that's, like, I love those, like, uh, type of Hollywood stories yeah. like that. Yeah. Where, and it was, like, such a... Uh, a closer knit community back then, yeah. where now you could name two famous people that aren't even in the same realm that I would know one and never heard of the other. You know what I mean? Like yeah. fame is so much different now than it was then. Whereas back in the day, like at least in comedy, it was kind of this close knit community. So shit like that could happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just like stories like that in general. But um, what's next, Matt? Um, life with Louis. Uh, yeah, so we talked we talked about life with Louis a little, and I think that's interesting because so he did have a sitcom as well uh, that only lasted six episodes. It was on CBS, and the idea was that he was like a therapist, um, and you know I think different clients come in every week and wacky hijinks ensue. I'm not really sure. That's I think Louis a weird guy. Like if you find the right role for him, which we'll talk about later, he could be a very interesting, you know, compelling figure. But I don't see him. If you're gonna have like a you know kind of generic sitcom, I don't see him being the lead. Because if you have to have like romantic moments or like I just can't imagine Louis on a date. You know what I mean? <laughs> Particularly with a woman. <laughs> I was just gonna say. <laughs> we'll get there. We, we'll get there. <laughs> but uh, it. You know, so it's credit to whoever figured out that maybe an animated series uh -huh. would be better because I think that kind of fits him and it gave him an outlet to tell these uh, childhood stories and in a way where, like, he turned an abusive father into, like, a wacky Saturday morning sitcom with an yeah. angry curmudgeon dad, you know? <laughs> um, but 
the 90s didn't come without controversy for old Lou. <laughs> um, so like I said, uh, Louis Anderson, if you're not aware, uh, was a gay man. Um, but, you know, you only speculated that in the 90s. It wasn't as easy to come out. And like I said, he had this sitcom on CBS briefly, and he had uh, Life with Louie, both like family shows. And uh, apparently, you know, you weren't allowed to interact with families if you were gay in the 90s, I guess. <laughs> so, he, <laughs> so he had to hide that. Uh, he said, like, you know, he was, he was afraid of uh, people finding out his true lifestyle because he had sort of this, you know, family-friendly image. Imagine um, if his dad found out. Oh, oh my God! Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Mr. Anderson would have taken too well to that. No, the, you don't think? I don't think he would use words that we could say on <laughs> in today polite society. I think he would have came out of retirement for yeah. that. Yeah. I, was saying, I don't know if he would use words at all. <laughs> he would have. He would have pepped right he's, up. Yeah, he's, he's doing arm circles with wrist weights on it. <laughs> Getting ready. Making a heroic comeback. I'll beat a rainbow <laughs> Thank, into you. Thanksgiving's next week. I get ready. <laughs> Big day. Can I say that going back for a second? Yeah. Him as a therapist is a hilarious concept. I can see. <laughs> because he yeah. is such a messed up dude, though. Here's that the just thing, makes though. me laugh. Here's the thing. The, the way I'm thinking of it, the reason I say, like, I don't know if it could work, I think it would work on, like, mm. Netflix now. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think it works if you're like, let's do all the things sitcoms did yes. in the 90s. And his job is just therapy. Because the way oh. I'm picturing it is, He's a, th you know, he's Frasier, basically. Uh, <laughs> you know, like you know what I mean? Like where he has to have romantic entanglements and he's yeah. in wacky situations. And oh, see, I'm, I'm thinking like you're right. I'm thinking like him sitting in an office for the whole episode, hearing about this guy's problems. I think that would be that could be very <laughs> that sounds interesting. hysterical. Yeah. But they didn't have, you know, you didn't have room to experiment with yeah. that stuff in, when there's only, you know, I mean, the '90s were at. Uh, there's more cable channels, yeah. but like they weren't doing as. They weren't having Always Sunny back in the 90s. We, you know what we, I mean? Shit like that. We had The Critic. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. That's true. The, the great John Lovitz. Yeah. Boy, John Lovitz getting a lot of mentions today. Yeah. <laughs> um, He's a little Nicky. <laughs> Shut up. Excellent, <laughs> excellent addition. <laughs> talking about John Lovitz. <laughs> um, so, uh, 1993. We're kind of around the height of uh, Louis Anderson's success. And evidently, he was uh, out at a casino, I think, um, and met a gentleman and uh, came on to him. And uh, years Literally. later, a few years later, uh, this guy came out of the woodwork and said, uh, I've got a big scoop. <laughs> Louis Anderson, gay. <laughs> the media will have a field day with this. So uh, evidently, he blackmailed Louis Anderson for a hundred grand. And like I said, Louis didn't want, you know, his family friendly image to be ruined. Uh, so he paid the hundred thousand dollars. A few years later, when Louis was hosting the family feud, this guy came back for two hundred and fifty grand. And this is where like uh, it helps to have agents and stuff like that. Cause guy I can so relate to this if you're Louis Anderson, where like if you have money, meaning if you can afford that, like if you literally have Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in your bank account. I would just be like, "Well, here it is." I just don't feel like dealing with this. <laughs> so it helps to have a legal team when, when you have the confidence of a Louis Anderson. Uh, but yeah, this guy, this guy blackmailed and uh, extorted him, uh, and it kind of loomed over Louis for a while. Um, now, the interesting thing is, I don't know. As far as I could tell, the claims were just this guy being like Louis came on to me, and so the salacious part would be like, "Oh, he's gay." I don't know if Louis was abusive to this guy at all or harassing, uh, which may mm. come up down the uh, down the roads, shall we say? Um, so just keep that in mind as we go along here. Ew, we, we do not, we <laughs> do not know. Either. Mike, what? Boo! <laughs> you know, you know the pun I just made. Yeah. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll get there. I like to let it sink in with the people. <laughs> um, so first, <laughs> you stink. Contain your excitement, folks. We'll get there. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I wouldn't even make that joke. <laughs> I don't know if I'd do that on very good show. <laughs> Louis, uh, so life with Louis only lasted, uh, three seasons. Like I said, the sitcom was, uh, only like six episodes or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, they, st they, you know, throw out the idea of reviving family feud and they approach Louis Anderson with it. And something I found was, uh, interesting is. By all accounts, Richard Dawson was kind of a dick. Am I wrong yeah. about that? Yeah. He was also like a serial groper. Oh, yeah, that, that I know. He's a real yeah. creep. He found his <laughs> wife, like, his wife was one of the broads he kissed on uh, Family Feud. <laughs> it was, 
There's, there's an episode of Family Guy where Peter's like, ah, oh, not until I host, since I hosted Family Feud, and he's like going through, he's like, honk, honk, honk. Feel your right yeah. breast <laughs> and the other yeah. one. <laughs> that was exactly what it was like. He would just yeah. kiss them, and they were like, uh, like they would make faces, <laughs> like they clearly didn't want it to happen. What a creep. Hey, it was a different time. <laughs> and Louis Anderson's getting railroaded, and I won't stand for it. You're yeah. darn right. That's damn right. Yeah, so they go to Louis Anderson, they say, we want you to hope we're rebooting the Family Feud. And Louis was like, hey, I loved the Family Feud. Like, I would watch that when I was a kid, it would be an honor. But I have to uh, I have to ask the big guy for permission. I have to go to Richard Dawson and say, listen, Richard, I know you created an institution here, and uh, I would like to follow in your footsteps, so I want to ask, like, would you be okay with me hosting the Family Feud? And Richard Dawson said, uh, go fuck yourself, fatso. <laughs> 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 Beat it. And then, much, much like, you know, the novelty of, like, if I, when I proposed to my girlfriend, uh, asking for uh, her father for her hand in marriage, I'll tell him to kick rocks if he says no. And that's what Louis Anderson did. He's like, I guess I'm still going to host it. I don't really care what you say. I was trying to be nice. So. Yeah, I did. It is hilarious. Like, what an old an old sack of shit. Yeah. For Richard Dawson to be like, no, you're not allowed. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, fuck you instead. I'm going to do it. And I'm surprised he didn't grab Louis Anderson by the jowls and vigorously make out with him. Hey, we don't know that he didn't. That's I didn't true. My research did not uh, show that. We don't have a name for, of this first uh, your guy. Right, first your right testicle, then your left <laughs> testicle. Uh, but Louis did do some good for Family, family Feud. He uh, got the networks to stop being so fucking cheap. Um, yeah. So I guess when they brought him back, they were going to keep the prize at $10,000. Mm -hmm. And he was like, after taxes, these people aren't going to get out of bed for $10,000. Like, we don't <laughs> want to look like cheapskates. So uh, he doubled the prize money. That's his big claim. to. F I heard him in a, a few different interviews, and they would bring up the family feud. And he's like, you know, I doubled the prize on that. He was very, he was very proud of that. <laughs> I'm shocked that that is the first impression that's popped up on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did it a couple times, it a and no one times. noticed. All yeah, right. no one really noticed. <laughs> I've been subtle about it. <laughs> um, what's next, uh, Matthew? Uh, well, you want to talk about his marriages? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so, shams. Listen, you got to put on a good. Here's my question to Louis Anderson. Face. You got to put on a good face for the people. I understand. Yeah, you got to grow a beard. Yes. I, I believe me, I get it. Um, that was a good one. So, but uh, the interesting thing is, I don't know that he was pretending. He may have genuinely been struggling with his sexuality. Because I think if you're just, you know, going for ke keeping up appearances, your marriages don't last four months and yeah. then four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Louis was just a little confused. But I, always, I love the, uh, we'll talk about another guy today with some wild uh, marriage stories. But I do love the idea of getting married and it only lasts like, like once you get to <laughs> month four, you're like, yeah. I got to give it another. <laughs> we can't end it now, right? <laughs> Well, I, you're probably right. He was probably struggling with it because, right. uh, I mean, when you're getting black eyes for being chubby, yes. I think uh, <laughs> other personality uh, Yeah, you, that one's being buried way down there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think one of them was like his high school sweetheart. So, again, I don't know. It was a little – it's murky. I'm not sure uh, what the deal was there. And I couldn't find him talking a lot about that. I looked for him talking about coming out. Um, I thought I – I'd always heard Louis Anderson child abuse – and that must have always been referring to his father. I was under the impression there was some other stuff that I never, I wasn't able to find it. So I don't really uh -huh. know about all that. Touchy um, uncle. But he didn't. He didn't talk. He talked about it on Marin. Um, a if little he could bit. find him. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they were spread out within the church. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, that, yeah, that might be the issue. That was a funny joke. I didn't get what you were going oh, right. at first. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Um, I'm trying to think of, well, all right, let's talk about baskets first, I guess. All his, right. uh, I think his like real career highlight would be baskets. And I always like to see guys like that where you find, you know, you kind of get your, your due at the mm -hmm. end where like, you know, he never, he never really got to show off his acting. Like I said, he was always trying to fit roles of like the fat guy yeah. or whatever generic sitcom was offered to him or whatever. And when Louis and Zach Galifianakis come along and are like, hey, would you play Zach's mother on the show Baskets? He said he leaped it. He's like, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> and he wanted to like kind of impersonate his mother a little bit. Um, oh, yeah. So he was able to use that. He was nominated for three straight Emmys, I think, and won one, if I have that right. Um, uh, and then I was talking to Craig yeah. about this uh, on, the, on the car ride up as beads of sweat were pouring down my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's, it was hot. 
It's a little, I'm, it's a little fuzzy on whether or not Baskets was canceled because of Louis C.K. Like, I'm not really sure. Oh. Um, because like the timing would suggest it definitely was like it was a successful show that was canceled in 2017, 2018, whatever that was. Mm. Um, however, uh, I, I, they didn't come out and say that at all. Louis wasn't like, there was no point where Louis was fired. So Louis was the creator and producer of baskets. Um, and my contention would be like, they could just fire Louis and yeah. keep doing the show. So I don't know. It's a, it's a little fuzzy. Huh. Maybe Zach only wanted to do four seasons. Um, but, uh, yeah, it ended, it ended there. And I would say that was the kind of the, you know, pinnacle of, of Louis's career when he had, you know, kids that never knew him from anything. It's a great show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what a phony I am. Yeah, it was great. I never watched it. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's good. Yeah. It's good. And he's uh, like exceptional in it. He was like the best part, I thought. I'd seen clips of him yeah. and he, he was very good. And he told uh, he was on This Is Not Happening, Ari Shafir's show, yeah, yeah. and uh, told a story about his mom. And just from that, I could tell like his impersonation of her was very funny. He must have got excited though when he got the call for the party. He's like, "There's a whole section in my closet I haven't been able to wear in public." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so before we get to uh, Mr. Tom Rhodes, uh, is there anything else I missed, Matt? Uh, splash. Splash. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Splash. The high. I, damn. If there's ever footage, I wish. I could have found. Evidently, it's been like scrubbed from the internet. Mm -hmm. I don't. This did not air. I don't think. Louis Anderson. I've seen it. Oh no, no. I'm sorry. His episodes of Splash aired. What I'm about to talk about uh -oh. didn't air. <laughs> Where Louis on Splash. If you're not sure what Splash was, you could probably guess by the title. It's one mm. of those classic reality shows where a bunch of celebrities are diving into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> classic. <laughs> yeah. For whatever reason, when like uh, Dances with the Star Dancing with the Stars and that shit started coming out. They're like, well, we could get celebrities to do anything. <laughs> it's like, hey, we got B-listers to jump out of a helicopter this week. <laughs> Who's the best at it? <laughs> so that's yeah, what they do with the Triple Lindy, huh? <laughs> which, uh, you know, which moderately famous person is best at uh, uh, jumping off a diving board? <laughs> and that's what Splash was. Um, but there was an episode that never aired uh, where Louie, because I was going through these episodes, I'm like, hey. He lives. <laughs> he did a he did a halfway decent job, but that's because uh, they've scrubbed the internet of when uh, Louis do uh, dove into the pool and nearly died. And uh, you know, as happens so often, we all have a classic story where Indomitian Sue has to pull us out of the pool. <laughs> And the way he got him out was he stuck his cleat. I was just going to say, he stuck his cleat into his Stomped head. Stomped his head, yeah. Did he step on his face first? Yeah, just <laughs> like you stepped on the joke. Hey, Indomitian Sue, for all his faults, was a, a hero. He saved Louis Anderson, yeah. all right? So wipe the slate clean. Super Bowl champion, don't forget. You're darn right. <laughs> um, yeah, so Splash, another great highlight of Louis Anderson. Uh, but, unfortunately, there was a little, a little darkness at the end. Um, but I, I think even Tom Rhodes is a little murky on this. So Tom Rhodes put out an album, I believe in 2015, where he told... How long is this clip, Matt? I forget how I cut it up. Uh, it's about two minutes and ten seconds. Okay. So if we get bored at any point, we <laughs> can stop it. But but uh, we'll yeah. play it. And this is Tom Rhodes talking it's, about uh, an encounter he had uh, with Louis Anderson very early in his career. How punchable Tom Rhodes looks on the cover of this album. I don't know yeah. much about Tom oh, Rhodes. God. I know enough. I don't know him, but I, I wanna, see him. I yeah. want to hit him. <laughs> I, I, don't dis I don't disagree. I, I could hit him. All right. Yeah. Just, well, ugh. Let's hear from the men. At some point in the night, he says he needs to take a drive. Do I want to take a drive with him? Who wouldn't want to take a drive with Louis Anderson? We drive down to Santa Monica Boulevard, and we parked in front of this nightclub for like 20 minutes. Pause we were there real quick. forever. Sorry, I should have set it up by saying, so Tom Rhodes is 19 at this point. Uh, Louis, I think, I'm, I'm guessing based on time, is probably in like his early 30s, something like that. But he's Louis Anderson. He's already successful. Tom Rhodes is like an up-and-coming comedian that uh, opened for him somewhere at some point. And so that's where we are in the story here. Keeps looking over his steering wheel going, I'm just looking for a friend, Tom. Just looking for a friend. Years later, when I lived in Los Angeles, I find out that the rage on Santa Monica Boulevard is the biggest gay bar in Los Angeles. <laughs> he was showing off his young meat. <laughs> I was pretty cute when I was 19. 
Then he says he needs to go to his apartment to pick something up. Do I want to go with him to his apartment? Who wouldn't want to go to Louie Anderson's apartment? Pause for a second. It's pretty no- fucked up to put on a special. Me, yeah. first of all, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be thrilled about going to Louis Anderson's apartment. It's like, what are we going to talk about? It's not like it's Dan Cook's apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be that cool. Yeah. <laughs> now that I'd get molested for. But uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, folks. Give me the soup. <laughs> uh, continue, Tom. Point in the story. Do I realize what's about to happen to me? I am fresh off the turnip truck, baby. Ew. And we walk into his apartment, and he had this wall with all these photos of him and famous people on it. And he goes, oh, let me show you my wall of fame, Tom. And we start at this end, and we work our way down the wall. It's like, this is me with Nipsey Russell. This is me with Soupy Sales. This is me with Big Bird. This is me with Kermit the Frog. <laughs> then we get down to the end of the wall, and I'm in the corner, baby. Pause for one more I'm second. Trapped. Sorry. I just wanted to point out that I 100% believe that those were Louis Anderson's famous friends. <laughs> that does, it, it fits. Where he's, it's not like, hey, here's me and Tom Selleck. It's, hey, here's me and uh, Kermit the Frog and the Big Bird. <laughs> By the way, uh, pull, pull this up so people can see what he looks like, Tom Rose, Ugh. if you can. His voice is so much more punchable than his face. And look well, how punchable that I face is. I think just as punchable. They're, they're, they they complement each other's punchableness. <laughs> Look how I'll, he clearly I'll, shaves his chest. I'll have a bit oh, of a absolutely. I'll have a bit of a defense for Tom Rhodes when we're done. But let's uh, hear him, hear him out first. <laughs> this is his move. <laughs> and he turns to me and he goes, "You're a very sexy man, Tom. You're a very sexy man." <laughs> and he's a big dude. And he stepped in on me. And I went like this. <laughs> And he cupped my ass cheeks. <laughs> Both of my ass cheeks have been in Louis Anderson's hands. <laughs> then he goes to kiss me, and I went like this. And as he's squeezing my ass cheeks, he kissed me on the cheek. He went. <laughs> and I went, can we go back to the comedy store now, please? And then I think as far as I could tell, I think it pretty much ends there. Yeah. Um, so mm. that was kind of thrown out there as, you know, Louis Anderson's sort of Me Too story, I guess. I guess. Um, and I was looking for more, believe me. Was I hoping there was more? <laughs> because I like you'll see like Louis Anderson, you know, Me Too accusations and stuff like that. This is the only one I could find. So if you know more, uh, send it to me on Twitter or something. But I, I yeah. could, wasn't able to find Nothing it. Nothing screams authentic like having it on a comedy bit, yeah. too. Yeah, well, so my defense of Tom Rowe, because I heard you say, like, what a piece of shit for putting this out there. Close. Keep in mind, <laughs> this was, uh, well, whatever you said. <laughs> Keep in mind, this was, like, two years before Me Too. Yeah. He did not have in mind, like, oh, this is going to ruin Louis' career. It's just a silly story. It was that recent? Um, yeah. No, he said it was a long time ago. He was it was a long time ago that it happened. I'm saying yeah. the comedy album was oh, 2015. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, sorry. Um, so Tom Rhodes did a podcast uh, a couple years later where he talked about like the Me Too thing, and he basically said, like, after hearing a lot of the accusations of Me Too people, like, I don't consider myself in the same category. Like, I've learned a lot from that, and maybe I don't, I don't know that he would have put it on a special a couple years later. Hmm. Um, and then you hear Louie talk about it. I heard Louie talk about a, a different situation with um, Ben Bailey, I think. Ben and he was talking about how... Uh, that'd be a good episode. <laughs> yeah. Ben for, Bailey episode. For real. Yeah, that'd be um, But they were... T- uh, Louie was basically talking about how uh, he was a flirt. But he's like, oh, I was such a flirt back then. <laughs> and it's like, I, you know, hearing Tom Rhodes' story, I'm not like, oh, what a piece of shit rapist. Yeah. Uh, but no. it is like it, it's. I think it's more telling of the time where it's yeah. like that's kind of how people behaved back then. That used and to be what people would do at a bar to find out if it was a yes or a no. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I hearing Tom Rhodes talk about it was kind of interesting. Um, where he his his opinion changed over time because of Me Too and things like that. That was that was but, Louis tapping his foot under Tom Rhodes's bathroom stall. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, if you want to, let, let's uh, call you know Louis whatever you want to call him, but. Do keep in mind it was probably difficult for a gay guy yeah. completely hiding who he was in 1985 or whatever that was. You know, um, who, who what better make, place to be than West Hollywood? Though yeah. you're darn right. Yeah, but who wants to make <laughs> seven foot 
monstrous Ben Bailey threatened feel threatened. Oh no, I'm sorry, <laughs> Louis. Louis uh, ben Bailey's story was different. Oh, right. It was that like, like Louis Whoa. thought Louis thought he was cute, and right. Ben Bailey was ju- was just like, oh, I'm talking to Louis Anderson. This is great. <laughs> and then at a certain point, Louis just goes, uh, "Can you tell I'm hitting on you?" <laughs> and Ben was like, "Oh, I'm sorry." <laughs> <laughs> Cash cab, great show. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, people are probably surprised by this, but I'm absolving Louie of any sins. I think he's a good man. If <laughs> that's, if Wipe that's the slate clean. That's if that's it, I yeah. mean, come on. At least at least when Hannibal Burst did the Bill Cosby bit, people were dying 50 laughing. 50 people yeah. came out. Yeah. 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 No, no, but people were dying laughing. This, like, the most I heard was one lady going like, ah. Yeah. Well, listen, I didn't say Tom Rhodes was a great comedian. I said he was a molested comedian. That's- <laughs> you said that, you've been a liar. <laughs> he touched the humor right out of his ass. Yeah, right. He just, just absorbed it. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I like that uh, I kind of got a feel for uh, Louis Anderson. And like I said, through listening to uh, some... Oh, I'm so, we had a little of his Tonight Show set, right? Did we not play that? No. Yeah. Oh, no, we had him talking about the Tonight Show. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. All right, we played that already. Thank God. Do we have anything we didn't get to? No, that's everything. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, kind of looking through Louis Anderson, I, I was glad uh, we got the opportunity to do it, obviously under sad circumstances. But um, he was, by the way, he was uh, he died of cancer. And uh, I don't know how fast it all happened, but I do know that I saw articles like Louis Anderson has cancer, mm-hmm. and then the next day Louis Anderson was dead. Um, so, again, I don't know if it's just that that's how – Quickly, it was reported, and he knew for a long time. Uh, but it did seem to happen uh, pretty fast. He so. had, like, secret norm cancer? I don't know that he kept it as... He, Louis Anderson strikes me as the kind of guy that would want to tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have cancer. Don't you feel bad for me? <laughs> hey, Tom, do you want to give me a farewell blowjob, please? Tom, what do you think now, Tom? I have cancer. <laughs> Are you willing to reconsider? I'm going to lose weight immediately. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. It was, um, it was cancer, Craig, not the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you do go, uh, if you do go find some of uh, Louis stand up, I think you will notice uh, his influence um, in, in in different people, particularly yeah. the, particularly in that time. And he was kind of like, you know, I guess Gleason would have been the first guy, and then you had like John Belushi kind of making fun of it. But like, there were not a lot of guys poking fun at being. You know, morbidly obese. <laughs> like Louis, what genuinely was one of the first, and now it's so common yeah. that people have you know built careers off. Gabriel of Iglesias, yeah. and, well, John Panette, but not up, uh, John Panette picked up Louis's career and ran away with it completely. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that also slowly. kind of evolved. Yeah, well, he walked, crutched away with it. <laughs> I think that also kind of evolved into other identities being becoming people's acts. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Not again. Not saying Louis was the first to do that, but he was one of the better ones in the yeah. early days. Dat fan. <laughs> so I think that's yeah. So what a historic career he had. Um, So, yeah, anything else on Louis Boys before we uh, get out of here? No. All right. Well, like I said, uh, subscribe to patreon.com slash blindmike. If you don't do it for us, do it for the great Louis Anderson. It's what he would have (laughs) wanted. And uh, listen to a very good show. That's where you can hear Craig and uh, Mike. And uh, check out Vaulted Podcasts down here in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. If you record a podcast and you say, I'd like it to sound as good as these boys or... You know, as good as the Justin show, all the historic audio that's recorded in this room, uh, then come to Vaulted Podcast Studios in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Uh, Hit up Matt from RI on Twitter or uh, vaultedpodcastsri.com for all of that. And then uh, we'll talk to you guys next week on Why You Laughing.